It's a really good question and a really hard question to answer. Why would senior decision makers who are entrusted to give the best possible advice to the president uh, willfully ignore uh, serious substantive analysis that is inconsistent with their assumptions and their hypotheses? Uh, I think the answer to that is somewhere in understanding the pathology of bureaucratic politics and group decision making. But it was clear that um, men like Bundy, who had already come to a basic determination and had a firm conviction that to fight in Vietnam was critically important to defending the national interest, that these studies were almost irrelevant to a conviction that was already clearly established in his, in his own mind. And that conviction for Bundy uh, was um, most clearly articulated uh, in a note he composed to himself on March 21, 1965, just as the war is about to become Americanized. And in it, he asked himself, is our purpose in Vietnam economic? No. Is this a critical uh, political interest? No. Is it a critical strategic interest? No. What is critical? And then he answers his own question, and he says, we must not be a paper tiger. We must show that when we make a commitment, our commitment is real, and that we're willing to pay the cost for that commitment. There was a fear that Bundy had, shared by many others in the administration, like Secretary of State Dean Rusk, that if the United States did not fulfill its obligation under uh, the CETO Treaty, uh, if it did not fulfill its obligation to uh, Saigon, then the whole fabric of American credibility in the Cold War would unravel and that uh, the credibility of our deterrent would be in doubt and the credibility of our alliance commitments would be in doubt and that this would have the effect of undermining the very foundation of American power. So to preserve that credibility, Bundy was prepared to fight a war that he didn't necessarily think we could win, to fight a war that he didn't necessarily think was an American interest but to um, even send in, as you alluded to earlier in our conversation, send in 100,000 men and lose, because the outcome would be marginally better to show that we were prepared to pay the cost. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and a leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Thank you.